So in the last uh, numerical example we gave for triple A and triple B, I went into a little bit of a, a, a narrative on what the swap rate is. So let's just lay it out specifically so that we understand what the swap rate is. The swap rate is the average of the fixed rate a market maker is prepared to pay or to receive in exchange for receiving or for paying LIBOR. So if we read it on the bid, the bid is the fixed rate a market maker is prepared to pay in exchange for receiving LIBOR. So the ask, on the other hand, is the fixed rate a market maker is prepared to receive in exchange for paying LIBOR. So what we're doing is we're getting fixed for floating, fixed for floating on both sides. In English, uh, what the uh, market maker is saying when we look at the bid is saying, give me LIBOR and I will give you this swap rate minus the spread. The swap rate is the average of the two. So if you give me LIBOR, if you pay me LIBOR, I will at this point right now, I am prepared to give you the swap rate minus the spread. I'm prepared to give you the bid. On the ask, it's saying, if you give me this rate, if you give me the ask, which is the swap rate plus the spread, if you give me the ask, I will give you LIBOR. And that's how we determine spot rates. Oh, sorry, swap rates. If you say it fast, you can confuse the two. So we're always, always ch exchanging LIBOR. LIBOR is whatever happens to, we observe in the market. And remember, we can only see it for specific periods of time. We will take or give LIBOR in exchange for this swap rate on this bid or this ask. And this swap rate is a rate at which on day zero, the swap has zero value. So it is a fixed rate of interest that would equate the value of a floating rate bond with the value of a fixed rate bond on day one. And when we get into valuing these uh, swap rates, you'll see exactly what that means. But just be aware that that's how the swap rate uh, is stated. It's a fixed rate that a market maker is prepared to either pay or receive in exchange for LIBOR. Earlier in the book, we introduced the concept of a zero curve or zero rates. And what we showed is that if we're discounting cash flows over a number of period, periods of time, um, it's not appropriate to use the same discount rate in each period. You want to use a discount rate appropriate to the period that we're discounting. And if we're using the risk-free rate, the proxy we have for the risk-free rate is uh, either the zero curve for treasuries or the zero curve for LIBOR. In other words, what would be the discount rate for a zero coupon bond maturing at that particular point in time? Uh, that's just a review of what, of what a zero curve is. It maps interest rates on zero coupon bonds to different maturities across time. That's all it does. We've looked at the treasury uh, uh, um, zero uh, curve, and we've already seen that in an earlier chapter and figured out how to extend that by using a set of zero coupon bonds for three, six, nine, and 12 month maturities, and then using coupon bonds past that. Well, we can also use uh, the swap rates to extend the zero curve, the LIBOR zero curve, or the swap zero curve, or as the book sort of calls it, the LIBOR slash swap zero curve, or the zero rates. For the first year, uh, down on the graph that I have here, we can observe what the zero rates are on LIBOR for 3, 6, 9, and 12 months by direct observation. Uh, we can see them in the marketplace. We can use euro dollar futures, as we've seen in chapter 6, to extend the zero curve up to two years and maybe even up to five years. Uh, but from two years onwards or from five years onwards, but for the longer end of the curve, we can use swap rates to extend the zero curve. And again, the zero curve is the interest rate at a particular point in time that we use, the risk-free rate that we use to discount the cash flow received at that time. Well, um, have a look at this uh, uh, um, note that I made on the side here. The value of a newly issued floating rate bond paying six month LIBOR is equal to 100 if the LIBOR or swap zero curve is used for discounting. Why? 
is because the coupon will equal the discount rate for each of the uh, for each of the payments that we receive if we're using this zero curve as our risk free uh, as the proxy for our risk free rate to discount the coupon if the coupon equals a discount rate you have a par bond do we get that okay so we're going to show we're going to um, get an example of how we use the swap rates to extend the zero curve but there's a bigger lesson uh, that's being smuggled into this little uh, uh, this little conversation a newly issued swap for a newly issued swap we have a, um, we have a few things that we can um, say about it number one the fixed rate equals the swap rate the fixed rate paid or received is the swap rate number two on the day that the uh, swap is created it is worth zero it is worth zero now let's combine these two points together the value of a newly issued floating rate bond paying six month LIBOR is par along with this on a newly issued swap it is worth zero so if we conceive of a swap as being a fixed for floating exchange a fixed a fixed for floating swap what we're doing the swap rate itself defines a set of par yield bonds so the floating rate bond is a par yield bond and the fixed at that swap rate must be as well so we can say something very important here and I put it in a box that the sum of all of what we've set up here is therefore the value of a fixed rate bond will equal the value of a floating rate bond on the very first day which will be 100 that is on the first day this is very important when we start valuing swaps because on day one they're set up such that they are worth zero the swap rate is chosen such that this equality holds that's how we arrive at the swap rate so let's see how we would uh, how we would do that here's uh, some uh, observed zero rates on a six month uh, uh, rate we have four percent if it's a 12 month zero we have 4.5 a one and a half year zero is 4.8 the two year zero we don't know what that is we don't know what the two year zero is but we can take what we know Let's take a two-year swap rate at 5%. We observe a two-year swap rate at 5%. This means that a $100 bond with semi-annual coupons of, of, of 2.5 sells for par. That's what that swap rate means, that it sells for par because this equality in the green box must hold. So a swap rate of 5 means that if we have a $100 bond with semi-annual coupons of 2.5, it must sell for par. So if it sells for par, we can use the observed zeros that we have for 6, 12, and 18 months and calculate the 24-month zero by discounting 2.5, which is the fixed rate on this bond. That's a 5% semi-annual, so 2.5 for four payments. And we know that it must equal par by this equation in here, by this equality that we've already arrived at. Well, we can observe what the discount, what the zero rate is for six months. Here's the observed zero rate for one year, the observed zero rate for one and a half, and there's our wild card. What do we need to solve for R, what the two-year zero is? Well, all of these uh, um, are just, this is just calculator play at this point. Uh, take the natural log of both sides to take the power term down to the, the, uh, the, the line and just solve for R, you'll get 4.953%. So we can find our zero rate 